What's up guys, welcome to Bardent, my name is Heinrich, and today we're just going to make some improvements to the movement of our character. This is what we left off with last time, it's a character that can move from side to side, jump, and even slide down walls, and jump up walls. So the improvements we're going to make is just improve the feel of the movement. Um, after playtesting a bit, I think I want a little bit more snappy and responsive movement. There's a couple of bugs with the jumping where sometimes it's slow and sometimes it's fast. And we're also just going to improve the friendliness of the code towards the user input. So let's get started. This project was created using Unity version 2018.3 and I have since updated to 2019.2. So if you also want to update your project, all you need to do is make a backup and then from your Unity hub, select the Unity version dropdown click on 2019.2 and then launch your project and just click confirm. Unity will then update your project and everything should be fine. So we'll begin by opening up our player controller script and we're gonna start off by going to our apply movement function. Now before we make any changes to this function, just know if this code works for you, by all means keep it. You do not need to do what I am, or you don't need to make any of the changes that I'm going to make. I'm just doing this to get uh, the feeling that I want for my character movement. So I'm just going to completely get rid of this first else if function or statement and then I'm going to move the second else if in front of this if statement and change this to if and change this one to else if. And actually no, I'm just going to change it to else and remove this is grounded completely. So the character won't move a different way when, uh, when he's in the air, but if we're not giving any kind of input, he still won't just stop completely and we'll still be applying this air drag multiplier. And that's about all that we need to do in apply movement for now. Next, we're going to take a look at our jump function. Now, if I quickly save this and hop back into my game and run it, and let's head towards a wall and just do a couple of wall jumps. As you can see, it, it works pretty well, but I'm sure if you've had a friend or a family member or something try to do the same thing, they tend to struggle. All the people that I've had play this so far has uh, really struggled to get the, the wall jump to work without uh, really sitting down and figuring out and building up the, the muscle memory for how you're supposed to push spacebar and and the, the movement keys or whatever. So what we're going to do is just improve the, the way the code takes in the input. My thought process for this goes like this. When the player pushes the spacebar, we, we know that we want to perform a, a jump action. Um, and there is different types of jumps we can do depending on the conditions around the player. So if the character is grounded and we push the jump button, the character of course needs to just jump up. Now, what if we were running sideways and we jump and we want to jump again, but we push the spacebar just a little bit too early and the character is not yet grounded and so the character just won't uh, perform a normal jump like this. See, I pushed it just a little bit too early and the character is not jumping. So what we're going to do is create a little timer that's going to start when we push the spacebar, when we know the, the player wants to, to jump, and then if the character then gets grounded with, uh, before that timer runs out, we'll just perform, perform another jump. And this timer is going to be super short, it won't be very noticeable. It's not going to keep track of your jump action for minutes at a time. Another thing we want to do is when we're wall jumping, we want to, be, we want to make it so the character can either push the movement key and then the spacebar, or the space bar, then the movement key. So when the player pushes space, we're going to check all the conditions and see if the character's grounded, do a normal jump. If it's not grounded, we're going to start the timer and then uh, when that timer is active, we're going to check is the character not grounded and touching a wall and trying to do a wall jump or has the, the player since gotten grounded and then just do a normal jump. So I think the best way for you guys to see how this works is just jump right into the code and let's get started with that. So in order to do this, we're going to break up this jump function into separate jump functions for each of the jumps. And I'm actually also going to completely remove 
this wall hop function because I did not feel like my game needed it. So if you want to keep that, by all means do it. You can create the logic for it um, in the way I'm, I'm about to do it now, or you can just remove it and follow along. So let's start off by declaring two different jump functions, one for normal jump and wall for, one for wall jump. And for now, I'm just going to move in the, the, the different parts of the code for the different jumps. And just remove this else in front of the wall jump if statement. And now we're going to reuse this jump function in a different way. And I'm just for convenience sake, rename it to check jump. Now let's go back up to our check input function. And let's start with the logic that I was just talking about. So when the character or when the player pushes the jump button, we want to check if the character is grounded or can still double jump. So we'll say if is grounded um, or amount of jumps left is greater is greater than zero. And in this case, the character is not touching a wall because we, if the character is touching a wall and wants to perform a double jump, we do not want the, um, I'm sorry, if, if the character is touching a wall and wants to perform a wall jump, we don't want them to accidentally double jump and waste their double jump. So we'll say, put it like that. And if all, if that's true, we're just going to call normal jump like that. And now else, we're going to start that timer I was talking about. So we'll just say jump timer equals jump timer set, which is two variables we're going to create just now. And then we're also going to set a Boolean equal to true, which is going to be called is attempting to jump. We're going to set that equal to true. So let's go up to our variables and declare these variables. So we'll come up to the top and say private float jump timer. And then we're just going to set that down here with a public float jump timer set. And we're just going to set it by default equal to 0 0.15. And then we also need to create that Boolean, which is a private bool is attempting to jump like that. Okay, and now once this timer is active, we're going to uh, go through some different logic to determine which jump to perform, if any. So now this is where that uh, this new check jump function. Oh, what did I spell something wrong here? Is attempting to jump. Forgot my capital. <laughs> Okay, so now we're going to go to our check jump function. And when the timer is active, there's just going to be some logic in here. So let's quickly come back up to our update function. And let's call check jump from here. Like that. And now in check jump, we're just going to say, if jump timer is greater than zero. Let's check what kind of jump we want to do. So let's first do wall jump. So we'll just leave a little note here for us. And what are the conditions for wall jump? Well, we're going to say if we are not grounded, so if grounded is false, just put a knot in front of there. And we are touching a wall and our movement input direction does not equal zero. So we're giving some kind of input, but then we also need that movement input direction to um, not be the same as our facing direction because we want to jump away from the wall. So equals equals negative facing direction. Okay. Oh wait, no, sorry. Movement impression in, in ugh, movement input direction does not equal facing direction. And then in here, we're just going to call wall jump. 
something like that. And then we're going to say else if we have touched ground again, since the timer started, we're just going to call normal jump like that. Okay. And then else, we're just going to say jump timer minus equals time dot delta time. So decrease the timer. Now let's head back to our wall jump and normal jump functions, which are over here. So when we've performed this jump, we're just going to set a jump timer equal to zero, and we're going to set is attempting to jump equal to false. And then the same thing in wall jump. So jump timer equals zero and is attempting to jump equals false. Oh, and actually I made a mistake up here. This jump timer is not going to be in an else, it's going to be in a separate if that is just is attempting to jump. Okay. Now, um, before we use this can jump boolean, that we have two separate jumps um, that that are going to have slightly different logics. So let's go up to our variables and change the booleans from can jump to can normal jump, and we'll add another private boolean. We're going to call it can wall jump, like that. And then if we come back to our jump functions. We'll just change this from can jump to can normal jump. And then in the wall jump, we can remove all of this and change this to can wall jump like that. Okay, and now the logic for when those should be true and false. Let's come up to our check if can jump function, which is up here. And all of this is looking good, except we want to change this to can normal jump equals false and can normal jump equals true. And let's look at this first if statement. A bug I came across and that somebody else uh, pointed out in the comments as well. Uh, sometimes when the character is moving left, say you're running left on a, on a flat piece of ground and you just continuously keep jumping, the character will keep jumping. But when you're going right, you will jump once and then you won't uh, jump again. And that's because this piece of code never happens. And the reason for that is uh, for some reason while falling down and you're moving left, the velocity of y never goes less than zero and is grounded at the same time. So when, when the character touches back down on the ground and this becomes true, this is no longer less than zero and it's some positive value and when you're when you're moving right and when you're moving left it's some it's the same value but negative so we're just going to change this from 0 to 0 0.01f and that uh, and that should work i'm also going to remove this is wall sliding function because i'm going to change the wall sliding a little bit as well so that the character doesn't always by default wall slide and only wall slides when it's touching a wall and you're pushing the arrow key towards the wall. Uh, that just feels a little bit better to me. And we're going to say if is touching a wall, can wall jump equals true. Okay, so that's it for the check if can jump function. So talking about the wall sliding, let's go take a look at the check if wall sliding function and just quickly make this do what I said I wanted it to do. So we just want to change this to say, okay, if we are touching a wall and our movement input direction equals our facing direction, then we want to set wall sliding equal to true. Okay. And now we can go take a look at our wall jump function. Another um, issue that I did not realize before, because we're using a force, um, to jump when we wall jump instead of setting the velocity directly as we do with the normal jump. If we have a downward velocity, we add a force, the bigger our downwards velocity is, the smaller our upwards velocity will be after we've added the force. So we just need to start off by setting our 
y velocity equal to zero before we add the force. And so that way the jump will always be consistent. So we'll just say um, rigid body dot velocity equals a new vector two, and we'll keep the x velocity. So rigid body dot velocity dot x, and we'll just set the y to zero. And then we'll go ahead and set its walling, wall sliding equal to false. And we'll set the amount of jumps left minus minus. And another thing we need to do now is actually set, before we decrease one from amount of jumps left, is we want to set amount of jumps left equal to amount of jumps. Because every time we wall jump, if we had a double jump enabled, every time we wall jump, that should we should still be able to jump again. So the wall jump almost, or the wall jump acts the same as uh, getting down onto ground again. Okay, so we'll decrease one from jumps. And that's all we need to add for now.